Hello and welcome to Wellywood Wargaming. My name is Damon and in this episode I'm going to be giving you a little painting tutorial. Now I don't do too many of these because honestly they're a little bit outside of my comfort zone but I felt like I've achieved a sort of workflow that I'm really really happy with at this point in my hobbying career uh, and lifetime I suppose. Um, so I thought it was worth documenting it and giving it to you raw and hardcore and unadulterated the way that I do things with my hobby. So just a little backstory here before we get really into it. I fell in love with the hobby as a very very young boy when I had an older cousin who was a little bit of a goth and I thought he was really cool back then. He had lots and lots of cool gothic macabre sort of stuff in his bedroom and among those were piles of White Dwarf magazine and I used to leaf through those magazines back in the 80s and I absolutely fell head over heels in love with the illustration and artwork of John Blanche and Ian Miller of course like many many other people that I know did. Um, and then later on, as I got more into the miniatures and the gaming side of things, of course, I tried to recreate a lot of that style in my painting and failed miserably. I had a mother who was an artist um, and I used to borrow her oil paints and all sorts. And honestly, I didn't know what I was doing, but I tried to recreate that sort of Blanchitsu, grimdark sort of style in my miniatures. Failed miserably, so I reverted back to what everyone else was doing, which was the heavy metal style back then of, you know, lots of layers, edge highlights, dry brushing, other shit, you know, and just never really fell in love with it, if I'm honest. It was too colourful, it was too bright, it was too vivid, it was too fucking happy, if I'm honest. Um, I want stuff that looks like it's going to give you tetanus if you pick it up. Uh, that's the kind of vibe I wanted, um, but I just couldn't recreate it. And those around me, my friends and peers, uh, also didn't have any sort of advice to give me. They, they couldn't really understand why I wanted to um, recreate this sort of vibe, this style, but it's just something that's always resonated with me, uh, as many of you out there probably feel the same too. Anyway, fast forward to now, of course, we have the internet. And, um, you know, when I sort of started seeing other people that felt like me out there, Blanchitsu enthusiasts and just grimdark hobbyists in general, um, I started, you know, seeing that there were other people out there that could give me tips and pointers and tricks and stuff. So I guess my style did go back to that. And now fast forward to here, um, I've achieved a, a sort of level that I'm quite happy with considering uh, the other sort of factors in my life. Now, like many of you out there, I don't have much time, um, you know, between family and work. I usually have a couple of hours in the evening at most um, to get my hobbying done. So I tend to smash things out very, very quickly indeed. Uh, I don't know if it's a compliment or what, but a lot of my mates are always astonished at how quickly I get my projects finished. Now this one, I shit you not, uh, from painting from start to finish, including, uh, you know, base coating and undercoating and all that stuff took me all of two hours, two evenings, an hour and evening. That is it. 14 miniatures, of course, they are quite heavily kit bashed. I did that prior to this, so I'm not factoring in that time at all. But in terms of the painting side of it, uh, this took me two hours. Um, and you can achieve that too if, you, if you're interested in doing that and if you like the look of these in images uh, then of course uh, do stay tuned to this video please do like, share, subscribe and check out the Patreon as well and comment down below let me know what you think of all this stuff too um, as we get into it but um, yeah I thought I'd give you a little bit of a backstory leading into this um, because I do feel like uh, this video is basically exactly where my head and my heart are at in terms of the hobby um, so I hope you enjoy all right then, getting into it, we have 14 fully assembled and heavily, heavily kit-bashed miniatures here. Um, I've gone off the back of the Apocrypha Necromunda um, sort of muti uh, thing that got released recently. If you're not familiar with any of that, don't worry. Um, these, these painting processes can be used for anything, but we've got some heavily, heavily kit-bashed miniatures here using Gene Steeler Cult kits, using other Necromunda kits, Hive Scum, uh, lots of Cordor bits here. Um, and some Nurgle pox walkers, of course, which are just fantastic miniatures um, and easy to get hold of too, along with some uh, Nurgle rotters, I believe, from the Nurgle rotters blood bowl team, which fit in nicely. They're about the similar sort of scale as the rotters, as you can see here, um, combined with some cordor bits. And I believe that is a reptilian overlord head there. So shout out to reptilian overlords there. Um, but yeah, some really nicely um, kit bash miniatures that took me a few evenings to do. The first process I'm going to do before we even prime them, though, is to add more detail, more texture, as even though these miniatures have got more detail and more texture than a lot of um, other Citadel miniatures, 
particularly the pox walkers I find, um, I like to first get involved with some technical paints and add some Sterland Battlemire to the bases. I do find these Necromunda bases are excellent. I really do like the extra detail on them, but they can look a little bit flat. So I do find that just adding a little bit of extra detail to these bases is really what is needed. Now, we don't want to obscure too much detail, but we do want to obscure some. I kind of want these to look like worn metal with a little bit of rust and stuff on them in the end. So just dabbing a little bit of the Sterling Battle Mire on here and making it go up the legs and onto the feet a little bit is good. Um, I try to avoid getting any on the sort of rim of the base because I do like to use that as a smoother sort of surface. The only smooth surface on these miniatures, in fact, would be the rim of the base. So I tend to smudge that off with my finger where possible. Typhus Corrosion now, which is, I, I think, an absolute must in any any sort of um, Grimdark Enthusiasts collection. It just has lots of fine little grits, uh, gritty bits in there. The actual colour of it is also great too, but I'm, here I'm just using it for its texture. And I'm popping this all over the miniature making sure that if there are any sort of smoother parts like the face generally um, I tend to leave those out entirely but the rest of the miniature I like to muddy up and obscure even more detail uh, and sort of blend the edges together a little bit with some of this typhus corrosion. I like the randomness and the, the way that the grit sometimes appears in areas and doesn't in others um, but as you can see here the whole 14 have been done now with the typhus corrosion and they are ready to be primed. Uh, here's one I made earlier, a la Blue Peter. This one's a champion made from a sort of Underworld's Ghouls part, I believe, with a with a scorpion tail that I got from somewhere and a huge chain glaive there as well. Bit of green stuff on this one too, but quite a simple conversion overall. Um, and we've got the leader here as well, which I kind of um, gone for sort of an Ad Astra helmet vibe on this one. You'll see when I paint it up. And a sort of Prometheus sort of uh, vibe going on here as well uh, with the sort of mutant arm sticking out. I really do like that sinister sort of look that it's got going on there anyway. Now for the priming, of course, we have gone for a Zenithal Prime, which I think is really important again with this style. And this is over the top of that texture. So we've gone for uh, Chaos Black Spray overall out of the Rattle Can. Uh, I don't use, um, you know, an airbrush or anything. I don't need it particularly smooth. I quite like the graininess that the rattle can lends. Um, so I've gone with black, Chaos Black Spray and then a Skull White Spray from above to give a sort of contrast uh, to look like it's light hitting from above. Now, I tend to do this on every miniature, um, to be honest, that I do, um, because I am going to be using some contrast paints here. And I do feel that contrast paints and, and, and washes like this one, Seraphim Sepia, work best over a Zenithal highlight. Now, Seraphim Sepia, I think, is an absolutely essential uh, tool, just as Typhus Corrosion is. Um, what I'm going to use this for, though, is almost like a color filter on the entire miniature before we actually get into using any colors. Um, of course, this is a color, but it's sort of a tobacco yellowy brown that I feel um, really does uh, bring in line with that sort of Blanchitsu, Blanchitsu sort of vibe that we're going for. Um, and you'll kind of see once I've done all of these just how awesome they look with just a tiny bit of extra texture, a Xenophil Prime and a Seraphim Sepia. You could almost stop here and you'd probably be okay playing with them. They actually look pretty decent. I've seen people use sort of monochrome uh, gangs and stuff for Necromunda and whatnot in the past and they do actually look pretty great. Um, but as you can see here, just using this filter, um, it's not a particularly, you know, this is not a, a, a Citadel contrast paint. It is just a wash. It's a shade. So it's not quite as, uh, it doesn't stain quite as much as a contrast paint. It just goes into all the recesses and makes it look like this guy has been dipped in a vat of Yorkshire tea. Um, you could probably use Yorkshire tea if you didn't have Seraphim Sepia, but I wouldn't advise it. You never know how it's going to turn out, I suppose. But already you can see just the fantastic sort of level of detail that pops out when you pop uh, a little bit of a shade over it there as well. Here we are looking at some of the sort of outcomes. It's not as dark as it, you know, as it first looks when you, of course, once it's dry. Um, it does dry pretty pretty well um, and just falls into those recesses naturally, creating a sort of tobacco sepia tint there. And like I said, you could actually almost leave it at this step and they do look pretty awesome. But what we're going to do first is the only dry brush of the entire um, project here. We're going to use some Wraith Bone, which is a base color, slightly thicker than a lot of the uh, sort of layer paints, I suppose. We're going to use a little bit of uh, a Wraith Bone dry brush just on the skin and the sort of upper areas 
Um, just to further push that contrast just a little bit because obviously using that um, that shade does mean that things are muted ever so slightly. So bringing it back up with the wraith bone is just pretty much the only highlight I'm going to do here. So getting an old makeup brush here and dabbing on some of the wraith bone. I always like to check it on my hand first um, because my hand is obviously textured as well. Um, just to see sort of how much paint is on there. And then what I'll do is just start hitting the miniature from above bringing out some of those lovely pustules and boils that we've got on these pox walkers and Nurgle infected bastards that we've got here. Now I have actually chopped off you know, some of the extra sort of spikes and tentacles and stuff and also most of the heads from these pox walkers I find are just sort of too, too much. So I've uh, gone a bit more hills have eyes, a bit more creepy. This one in particular with the head from a, uh, you know, a chaos uh, sort of psyche, I suppose, from the Blackstone Fortress uh, set uh, works really, really well on this sort of three-armed gunsling that we've got here. The next thing to do is to add another base color. This one is Lead Belcher, which is the sort of, I think, the darkest um, sort of steel metal color that we've got from Citadel. And this is just really just to block out any of the metal parts, weapons, um, uh, any sort of any anything metal on there, buckles, um, some of the guns I've done in the uh, metal here as well. Um, before we go ahead and, and move on to the next part but um, just be really careful not to get this on any of the skin because the skin is always going to be the lightest um, part in the entire miniature here so just be really careful use a, a smaller brush here to to get this on but at the end of the day you're not doing an heavy metal sort of paint job so you don't have to be too neat and tidy I just you know obviously if you can avoid um, you know um, getting any of the darker colors onto the lighter areas I suppose because it's quite hard to go back and touch up that skin once we've gone through the processes that we've gone through so the first contrast paint here is black templar um, I like to start with the darker paints first and then work my way up uh, with contrast paints at least um, so the black templar here is going to be used for all of the black areas of course and in this case I'm going to go for all of the um, all of the fabrics and sort of pouches and stuff on this one. Um, in fact, that's all I use it for on this. So just the trousers uh, or pants um, on these guys is all I'm going to go for. Uh, as you can see, I've blocked out all the silver sort of gunmetal parts on this one, as well as his mask there as well. Uh, and just being really careful, again, not to splash this onto that skin or make any mistakes because it is really hard, like I said, to fix those mistakes, particularly on the skin if you do get uh, the darker color on there. So with, with contrast paints as well, I tend to um, I tend to overload my brush a little bit more than most people, um, but it's probably because I know that I, you know, I'm fairly safe with my sort of movements. My muscle memory is okay at this point because I've been painting for a long time, but I would suggest using uh, less than I do in some of these videos. Um, the next one I'm going to be using is Wildwood. Um, this is for all of the sort of leather parts, so the pouches, the straps. Um, we're going to be doing the straps on the back of this guy. Um, and this really does split things up as soon as I put this on. Uh, you can see how well this sort of breaks things up a little bit. Wildwood is a very um, chocolatey, dark brown. Um, it's not necessarily ideal for leather, but with these guys, of course, I wanted to go sort of maximum contrast. So we've got very light skin and very dark everything else. So Black Templar, a little bit of Wildwood on the boots and on the leather areas here. That's pretty much it um, for now with that contrast paint. Uh, we're then going to come back in with uh, a little bit of skeleton horde and this one is just for the sort of wraps and stuff now i've got to say skeleton horde is actually really similar to the sort of seraphim sepia that we used earlier slightly maybe not quite as yellow it's a bit more of a brown but it's pretty close um, but this is going over the top of that seraphim sepia layer that we've got on the sort of wraps and bandages and stuff just to go a little bit further um, darkening down uh, and making those wraps look even more disgusting and uh, full of grime and filth and just yucky stuff I suppose pus and whatever else is on these guys so yeah 
Blocking in the, uh, the the bandages and wraps on that guy is all we're going to do with the skeleton horde. Any skulls as well we'll do with that too. Now this is the first sort of colder colour. So far every colour that I've used is pretty warm I would say. This one, um, Griff Charger Grey, is a slightly bluish dark grey um, Citadel Contrast paint. And I'm only going to be using this on the hair and beards of some of these guys. Not all of them um, because most of them actually don't have hair and beards. So... Using this colour, which is a slightly colder colour, um, again, I'm not sure how it's going to turn out with uh, with the rest of the miniature, um, but I think once I've gone through my final steps and added some um, some washes and stuff over the top, it will bring it all together and stop it looking quite so cold. Um, I was going to use sort of apothecary white here uh, and, and go for a sort of uh, you know white haired sort of Santa Claus kind of vibes, but it just wouldn't have really suited uh, the griminess of these miniatures. I don't think. So the next thing here is some Agrax Earthshade, again an essential um, an essential uh, wash to have here and this one is going to be used on all of the metal parts. Um, you could use Null Oil here, um, but the difference is obviously this one is far more sort of dirty looking, more oily looking. Uh, the Null Oil is great for metal as well, but I tend to find with this particular vibe that I'm going for anyway, I find the Agrax Earthshade. It's just a little bit better. Now, I think the Null Oil and Agrax Earthshade um, recipes have changed slightly over the last few years. So I think this is a slightly older pot of Agrax Earthshade. I'm not quite sure, but it seems to be a little bit darker than the ones that I've used in the past, which I think is a good thing. Um, so normally, ordinarily, I would do two passes of this, but in this instance, I actually only just did one pass of the Agrax Earthshade there. So as you can see, that is pretty much all of the sort of main colors blocked in now. Uh, we're going to go in with some more washes. This one is um, Caraberg Crimson, which is a sort of pinky, pinky reddish color here. Uh, and this one I'm going to mix with some water in a one-to-one -one sort of blend. Of course, I have used far, far, far too much here. It just kind of came out a bit too fast out of the pot there. And this one is for the skin. So we're actually going to use this on the skin, watered down quite heavily. So don't worry too much. You're not going to stain it too much. This is just a very, very light wash. Again, kind of a recess filter on these guys uh, and push it around quite a bit. And what we don't want to do here is have this pooling anywhere. Um, if it does, don't, don't worry too much. You can just get a dry brush and sort of take... Uh, some of that excess moisture off but I find that this um, Caraberg Crimson does give you a sort of sickly um, sort of raw uh, painful look to the flesh here as well which is needed when you've got such uh, ill horrible looking guys. The next thing of course is uh, odorless mineral spirits which is of course odorless so it doesn't smell quite as bad as white spirits. It's also from an art shop. We've got streak and grime here as well which is fantastic and some cotton buds uh, and this really is the absolute magic step. Um, I sometimes use oil washes but here I've gone for a watered down streak and grime. So what we've got here is a one-to-one -one mix in this little lid here of streak and grime and the odorless spirits and what we're going to do is just gently gently from the top to bottom pretty much um, just work this wash all over the miniature now um, what a lot of people like to do is go back afterwards once it's kind of dried a little bit with some mineral spirits on a cotton bud and wipe it off but in this instance again because I'm in, impatient and I like to work very very quickly I also I kind of don't want it to dry too much um, this is a watered down mixture so it's not going to be quite as heavy as just using the streaking grime out of the pot. Um, I do prefer watering this stuff down. I just find it a lot easier to use, if I'm honest. Um, and again, it's not going to stain the sort of paler parts on the miniature quite as much. So instead of going in waiting for it to dry a little bit, I'm actually just going to go in with a dry cotton bud. And there are three ways you can do it. You can either sort of dab it like this, which does, um, you know, or you can be a bit a little bit more gentle and just roll the cotton bud up and down which I think is the best way of wicking away that moisture uh, without damaging the paint underneath especially when you've only got very thin layers of washes and contrast paints here so yeah rolling it back backwards and forwards I think is the best method try not to rub too much because the last thing you want is for paint to come off if you're too rough with it it's just not very nice at all but as you can see you know the contrast of this miniature is definitely brought out a lot 
by this last step. All right, so now that streak and grime uh, mix wash has sort of dried. It didn't take long to dry, actually. It's a lot uh, quicker drying uh, than an oil wash, by contrast, I must say. Uh, these guys are looking fantastic. The uh, Obviously, the, the level of detail is brought out with this wash, and they just look super, super grimy, filthy. And just like I said, they look like they're going to give you tetanus just by picking them up. So lucky I got my shots there. Um, but really, really happy at how these guys have turned out. To be honest, I don't really think there's much more I want to do with them. Of course, now we need to go in and do the bases, though. So what I'm going to do here is a bit of an experiment. I've got some enamel based uh, light rust from AK Interactive. That's a wash with um, some, uh, you know, um, AK Interactive light rust pigments here as well. Uh, now, previously, I have mixed these pigments with water and with alcohol, um, but I'm actually going to try something new here with the enamel. The reason being in that I feel that often when I use water or the alcohol, it doesn't quite sort of sink into the recesses as much as I would like. Um, so mixing some of the pigments in with an enamel here and just applying that to the bases fairly liberally, um, trying not to get it onto the feet too much um, is definitely the thing to do here. If you do get it on the feet though, it's not too much of a problem. You can just wipe it off with a cotton bud with some little bit of mineral spirits on there as well. Um, but I feel like once this dries, of course, it looks very, very bright at the moment. Once this dries, it stays pretty bright, but it's not too overpowering. But it just really does create a nice level of contrast with the rest of the miniature being very, very muted and um, dull in terms of its color overall. Um, but we go through and we do all of this with the wash there. As you can see, I've made far too much wash here as well. So uh, very wasteful. Uh, today in all of this but the last thing to do once that's kind of once it's dry or mostly dry is to go in with some chaos black and start blocking out the rims this i find is the most satisfying part of doing miniatures in general is getting the rim. i look forward to the rims so much um, in this instant though because the enamel has kind of gone over the rims a tiny bit um, it does take two fairly thick coats of the chaos black just to um, get that coverage um, fully all over the rims of the miniature there. So let that first little layer dry before you go in because you don't want sort of chunky bits on the rims. You want it nice and smooth. And that really is the last step. Now we're going to look at the photos. Thank <laughs> you. 